Hey everybody, and welcome to, wait for it, Avernum 4. Hey, you didn't see that coming, did you? Okay, um, so yeah, this is the long-awaited, maybe, continuation uh, of the Avernum series. I mean, obviously the, the games themselves are quite old, but um, I, I did Let's Plays on the first three games, in case you were not aware, for somehow, I mean, how could you have missed those? Anyway, um, and of course I was going to continue the series at some point, because while remakes, modern remakes, in in the the same vein of the of the first three games might eventually come, there's certainly no there's certainly no um, plans for the immediate future as far as I'm aware. Um, so it might be, might very well and will definitely take years if they ever come. So I guess I'll have to bite the bullet and play it as is. Which is not that bad. They they run well enough. This game runs well enough um, under uh, Windows Windows 10 or any modern um, OS, I would assume. And just recording it is a little bit finicky, and I I really don't want to get too much into the technical stuff, which most people, probably everybody watching this, is probably not even interested in at all. Um, but this game is a little bit peculiar. Uh, it absolutely insists on running in full screen mode in a specific resolution. Um, I tried a, a wide variety of different um, different approaches to, to try and make it run in windowed mode. The only thing I think would work, or I'm pretty sure would work, would be to, to actually run an, like a, a virtual a, a sandbox, a virtual OS inside of, of Windows and have that OS run in a window. And that would allow me to, that should allow me to play this in windowed mode, but that's I've never done that, and it uh, definitely didn't seem like it was going to be worth my time. It, it does work. As you see, I can record it. It's a little bit inconvenient. There's some weird flicker, flickering going on down here. I'm not sure if that's going to be picked up in recording. Also, the game uh, is would would be stretched to, um, to widescreen format, and therefore, obviously, deformed. Um, if not for a neat function on my monitor that allows me to squish any picture to 4x3 format, so that's that's cool. It does record it in, in the proper um, in the proper dimensions, so that's not a problem, thankfully. Anyway, um, I've already spent too much time talking about this technical stuff that interests absolutely no one. So, also, this is a take two. I have technically recorded the first episode already, but I was not happy with the with the result. I I did uh, I did tweak some settings and um, change my recording setup slightly. And I'm just going to re-record that instead of trying to salvage what I have. Uh, so the, first, the very beginning of the game is not going to be blind, but I did spend a lot of time just, you know, talking and complaining about the inadequacies of the uh, older engine. Um, and that kind of thing. So why don't we just jump into it? I, I don't know anything really... I, I mean, I don't know much about the overall story or anything. Um, well, I guess we'll just go through everything again. I'll try, try to make things a bit uh, quicker than the first time around that you didn't even see. So we should, I should uh, basically get to where I was and beyond um, if I can finally start going. So, welcome to Avernum 4. It's a fantasy role-playing game. I guess we can make this relatively quick. You wander the underworld, meet people, go on quests, blah, blah, blah. We know that. I mean, honestly, okay. Um, I, I, honestly, I did expect the storyline to continue on the surface after Avernum 3, but apparently, uh, and from what I've already seen, we do at least start underground in good old Avernum as we know it from the first two games. Um, but we'll see where that where the game goes from there. I, I don't know exactly how much how long after the third game this takes place. It it is some time after that, I guess. Uh, but we'll get to that. Um, you wander the underworld, at least for now. Right? Uh, through good or bad luck, you are the one who has the chance to set things right. Right, and of course... I mean, that devastating attack might be the the full-on revenge of the... Um, 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 oh god. Uh, mind lag. Where, wh what were they called? You know, the... Um, Vanatai, my god, okay. It's it's not been that long, but the Vanatai, of course. Um, you start, you need to choose what sorts of adventures, right. Thankfully, I've already made up my mind about the party I w I'm going to play, and I guess we'll also, I'll also try to get over, to go over the various differences that um, 
I've already um, that I've already noted and uh, of course talked at length about in my lost in that lost first episode. So um, yeah, one change is that uh, Slith's and Nephilim do get a, an experience penalty, unfortunately, but they do start with specific um, advantages, of course, unlike humans who have no advantages and no disadvantages. Uh, there is a thing called traits, and basically that allows you to, to customize your characters by giving them, well, advantages and disadvantages. And also, I wonder why, why it lists mage spells here, or uh, spells, in, spells in general. Um, doesn't seem like you can start make your character start with different spells for a penalty. Anyway, uh, so picking a disadvantage will give you an experience bonus to make up for it, and giving you uh, giving the character an advantage will give you a penalty. So basically, you can you could make a, a human character into kind of a kind of similar character to um, to a Slith or a Nephil. If you wanted to, I'm not going to adjust my characters. So my party is going to be, I guess, um, I originally did it uh, off camera, but now that I know what I'm, what I want to do, it should be relatively quick. So I'm going to go with a uh, Slith warrior, and because I, I was going back and forth. Um, I uh, basically I want to use also my mouse is ah, getting stuck. <laughs> that was a. There was a fluff in there, in front of the laser. Yeah, that's better. Okay, um, basically I was pretty happy with my party composition from the previous game, which was... Oh, also the flickering is continuing. Oh, I really hope that doesn't get picked up. If it does, I'll have to look into that. I'm pretty sure that wasn't the case the first time around. Oh well. Maybe it's going to be gone in the main game, hopefully. Anyway, so I was happy with uh, basically one warrior, one archer, and I'm curious to see how viable archers are going to be in this game. And then a, um, a mage and a priest. So kind of standard stuff, maybe, um, except for the one warrior setup. I could definitely go f with two warriors and be um, much more effective, but, you know, I kind of like adding a little bit challenge because, the, uh, honestly, the game was not particularly difficult, even on hard difficulty. Uh, the previous games were, I should say. I'm really not sure how much more hardcore and how much more old-school this game is in terms of difficulty, so I'm not going to go for Torment. If this were remade in the, in the modern engine, I would probably try and start a game on Torment, now that I'm quite experienced with the engine and the games. But for the sake of the Let's Play, and because I'm not sure how hard it's going to be, I'm going to go with Hard, which is actually called Tricky in-game, which, which is kind of cool. So anyway... Um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Slith, Nephil, despite the penalties. Um, and, you know, I, I thought about um, making my mage and priest um, especially skilled at what they do, giving them a similar penalty to, to bring all the party closer together in terms of experience, but it's really... I mean, honestly, I'm not entirely sure how, how much it even... how much of a difference it even makes, because you're going to level up more quickly, right? So that kind of... Uh, makes up for not having the advantage in the first place because you're just going to have more skill points to spend on stuff. Anyway, um, without much further ado, I'm going to... I don't know, maybe I'm I'm going to set up the characters off-camera. Uh, maybe I should do that. Because it's going to take me a few minutes. All right. The screen flickered, so I guess we're recording again. That's... well. Uh, yeah, so you can see my party. Uh, the names are... I don't know. I was... I was... Uh, going back and forth. Um, they are not very fantasy names, especially uh, for Mike the Slith. Um, I mean, we can explain that that Mike and Dirk are are just nicknames because their human companions uh, cannot possibly pronounce their names correctly anyway. And I mean, Dirk might actually be just a nickname because you know it's it's a name for a dagger. These these uh, are all just names from uh, names of actual people I used to know a long time ago. Um, so, in their honor, I wanted to name my party after them. Um, it's very unlikely that they're going to see this, but uh, hey guys, if you happen to watch these, maybe you recognize uh, yourself here. Although I did change them somewhat to to fit a little bit better. Anyway, I'm not particularly happy with Mario. That's just such a non-fantasy name, but okay, whatever. Um, so we have him as a mage, her as a priest. 
he's an archer and he's a warrior with pole arms because I was, I mean, I, I'm always going to miss out on something, right? I'm not going to be able to make use of swords or shields, but at least I'm going to make use of the good pole arms in this game. So there's that. Uh, I guess I'll quickly go over the character stats. Um, maybe one one difference in case you're not familiar with the uh, with these older games. Um, this is uh, apparently works on a point based system. So uh, every everyone started with I think 75 points to spend on all these various skills. So I went with um, strength and endurance for our frontline fighter. A bit more endurance than everyone else. Everyone else has five points I think. Uh, can you actually go? No. You cannot quickly switch between characters here. That's fine. Um, I gave him pole weapons. He did start with two points. Uh, quick action specifically only benefits melee characters, unfortunately. It gives you a chance of a free second attack, which sounds good. So I went with that. In fact, I'm really not sure how, how viable the archer is going to be, because there are no um, missile-specific talents at all to pick. As you can see, it's kind of limited. It's only the basic skills here plus quick action for some reason which uh, is for melee characters i don't know maybe because they needed a buff maybe archers are good enough as is we'll see um then some hardiness of course which is damage reduction defense is dodge and that was pretty much all my points so yeah uh, for him i went with more dexterity a lot of bow skill actually because as i said there isn't really a whole lot there is gymnastics which he did start with for being a nephil i guess also Screen flickered again. Um, I hope... But the flickering down here is gone. So I, I think that might have been another program running in the background causing that. It's... Well, hopefully we'll not have too many of these little um, glitches happening. Anyway, um, he did start with thrown missiles. I would otherwise not care about that. But you cannot take away points. So there's that. Uh-oh. What's going on? Cursor became choppy somehow. Uh... Okay. Um, also, unfortunate change or unfortunate difference is that tool use has to be on one character. That's actually one difference between uh, the second attempt and the first that I did. Because now I know that. I previously did split up the tool use, or rather I gave another character a little bit of tool use, but that does not actually work that way. So this has to be concentrated on one character, and I guess it makes the most sense on, on the archer with a lot, of, a lot of dexterity. Also, not a lot of other things to spend points on right now. So I went with six because I happen to know that some of the early doors require six. So we should be able to open a lock or two if we're lucky. So there is that. And for the spellcasters, it's pretty standard stuff, I guess. I went with int, a little bit less endurance. Yeah, that's right. Because, um, I don't know, I, I think I gave everyone five endurance before, but I kind of ran out of points, so I'm not entirely sure how I did that. Uh, he's the guy with nature lore, although nature lore and first aid still um, work across the party. So the more the better. Um, start with some spell, uh, mage spells, of course, to have some spells available. Arcane lore, spellcraft, all seems useful. Yeah. And then for a final character, we have int, endurance. Oh, actually, she starts with five. Huh. I could have reduced that, or I could reduce that if I wanted to. Priest spells, arcane lore, spellcraft. Maybe I should to to make them more even. I could give her more spellcraft and a bit more first aid. Hmm, I wonder if I shouldn't. If I'm maybe I should do that. So the new character type, custom. That should reset it. Yes. So we go to five, I guess. Four. Um. Priest spells, 5 seems like a good starting value. Arcane lore. Spellcraft is kind of pricey, but it might be worth it. And then as much first aid as we can get, which is still only 4. So ultimately I get an extra point of spellcraft. I don't know, maybe I actually had, the, had it that way and decided it wasn't really worth it. I could reduce this and get 2 more points in first aid. That might help, help out quite a bit early on to save uh, healing items and, and uh, you know, resting because we'll restore more energy, right? Yes, it does restore both. Maybe I'll go with that because it is very much... Her, her role is going to be mostly buffing and healing, of course, as a priest until very much, very much later in the game when she, she'll get access to 
some powerful spells. But early on, she's going to do a, a lot of her healing passively with first aid, so I think it makes sense to get that as high as possible. Anyway, yeah, um, I think we're good. As good as we're going to be. Hard difficulty. The game is choppy somehow. I'm, I'll have to look into that. Something must have changed. Anyway, Avernum is a place. I'm, yes, that's true. It's a nation that exists entirely underground. The Avernites live far below the surface of the world, in a huge, seemingly endless network of caverns and tunnels. There are forests of giant fungi and black subterranean lakes. It is a hot, wet, shadowy place, lit by glowing fungi and kept warm by natural steam vents, and it is inhabited by proud people, determined to make their fortune and maintain their independence. The surface of the world is entirely controlled by the mighty empire. Well, I mean, not entirely anymore, maybe? Well, I'll say something definitely happened, because I specifically installed a fix that got rid of the, of the choppiness. Uh, I'm not sure what, what broke there. Anyway, I'll keep going for now. Um, the Empire teleported... No, wait. Uh, Avernum began as a prison colony. The Empire teleported its misfits and petty criminals into the underworld. A life sentence with no parole. But that unhappy past was years ago. The Empire now tolerates Avernum and grants it some degree of independence. Travelers can move back and forth between the surface and the depths. Avernum is now a land of fortune seekers. Miners, explorers, and adventurers come to explore the tunnels, looking for valuable metals, gems, and crystals. Avernum is a perilous place, though. Monsters and bandits roam the more remote passages, looking for settlers to ambush and rob, or worse. Thus, Avernum maintains an army which defends its citizens, and Avernum also trains and hires adventurers. Adventurers are mercenaries, wanderers, blades for, hires, uh, blades for hire, who roam, ad, who roam Avernum and track down monsters and criminals, in return for the hope of wealth and fame. And not dying horribly. You are adventurers. It is a career with great potential, but a high casualty rate. Thankfully, there is quick saves. You have only just finished your training. Because of your promise, the castle soon hired you to help keep the peace. So, yeah, I mean, at first it made it sound like adventurers were not actually part of the of the army, but uh, it seems like like they they are after all. Not entirely sure how that's how that works. Um, yeah, you have been sent to Fort Monastery, uh, a new name for sure. Not one we, we've heard in any of the previous games. One of Avernum's smallest and most remote outposts, also one of the most recent, hence why we didn't hear of it before. Uh, these caverns are dotted with small mines and farms and perpetually troubled by goblins. That is why you have been sent out here. The goblin infestations have become too widespread for the small garrison to handle. You have only just settled into your quarters in the dank tunnels under the fort. You're supposed to go upstairs to Cave Matos and receive your orders. Goblin hunting is a poor way to begin your career. Eh, I mean... The creatures are wily, nasty, and poor. It is more pest control than a task for an aspiring hero. But you have to start somewhere. And maybe, if you're very lucky, something terrible will happen soon. Something will give you the opportunity to display your heroism. Face terrible foes and withstand great danger. Oh, I'm sure. Also, you really should not wish for something terrible to happen, ever. But, okay. Unfortunately, your wishes are about to come true. And we have a loading screen. Which is surprisingly long, given the, you know graphically sparse nature of the game. How to move? Well, I mean, yes, you move around by clicking, you can also move around by moving the cursor, uh, moving your, using the arrow keys, I mean. Um, unfortunately, it is. it does not seem possible to play the entire game with only the keyboard, which I, I was under the impression that these older games specifically allowed that, because I, I could swear that uh, when I played Nethergate Resurrection, another older game, maybe from a similar time period as, as these, uh, and also from Spiderweb Software, of course. Um, when I played that, I, I, could have sworn, I could have sworn that I played that entirely with, with the keyboard, you know, uh, activating everything with with keyboard shortcuts, but you, while there is a... Oh, this... No, never mind, this is certainly still choppy. Maybe not as bad as it used to be. I don't know, maybe that fix still works and something else broke. Anyway, um, well, you can hold the tap button to highlight people, um, but not interactable objects, unfortunately. Um, it also does not display, you know, letters for, for things to interact with. So yeah, using objects. I mean, this is all pretty standard stuff, obviously. Step, you step out into the dank and smelly cavern just outside your dank and smelly bedroom. Your low rank in the Evernight army doesn't get you very good lodgings. You're down in the ruins of the old monastery this fort was built on. This chamber is a disused storeroom, where you have been leaving your armor and weapons while you sleep. 
Before you go upstairs, you should get and equip your weaponry, as sparse as it is. There are weapons on the table to the south. You should get them and equip them. To pick up an item, bring up the inventory window. Press the blah, blah, blah. Yes, I mean, I really can't skip the tutorial entirely. Uh, so, okay, next unfortunate change. I guess there are, there are some very unfortunate differences between the more modern games and, and this one. The things that are going to be a little bit painful to get used to. But thankfully, I've already kind of gotten used to them. I'm still going to complain, so don't worry. Getting items, yep. So, this is the inventory screen. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty standard. You have quite a few slots, you have stuff on the ground, you have your quick use items. Unfortunately, we're once again back to only four uh, spell quick slots and four item quick slots, which are significantly less useful, if you ask me, but it's what it is. Um, and then you have your pack, and there is no junk pack as far as I'm aware. So you'll have to, or I'll have to really pick and choose what to pick up. Only pick up things that are actually worth taking, carrying around, because they're also going to add to my carrying weight. So yeah, I guess Mike here is going to do most of the heavy lifting and everyone else is going to carry the lighter stuff, maybe consumables and, and things. So yeah, that's there's that. Also, we only start with some not so appropriate items for everyone. We're going to replace a couple of them soon ish, but unfortunately, no pole arm. So, yeah, we're not going to be super effective for now. But we're also not going to have to do a lot of fighting, so that's fine. The blade in your hand makes you feel much better. Avernum is a poor land. Like most weapons down here, it is dented and dull. However, it should do to it should do to fend off an angry lizard or arachnid or goblin. You should get the armor and shield from the other table. Also, there is a helmet in the box to the east. Click on the box to open it. Yeah, well, I mean, let's do that. He's going to get all the armor because the plan is to have him do all the fighting early on. Sure, he'll get a shield and sword for now. I guess he'll get another leather armor. And I'm at least happy to see that you can, again, quickly assign items to another character just by hitting that number key while the item is in the air. That's very convenient and going to come in handy quite a bit, I'm sure. I should also really do a thing that I didn't do the first time around uh, and make a save in the very beginning of the game. Actually, I'm just going to save over this one and call it save zero. Yes. So, um, because if I had done that, obviously I could have just reloaded that save file and uh, started the re-recorded first episode from there. How to fight? Well, we know that. Okay. Also, oh, hold on just a second. Okay. Should be back again. Uh, yeah, I once again set up um, the tool auto hotkey to allow me to scroll the window with the WASD keys, which is a lot more convenient than using the arrow keys or depending entirely on mouse, on, on yeah, scrolling with the mouse, which I actually kind of hate, but... You know. So this should be a lot better, and I also had to rebind, of course. Uh, actually, only one key in this game, because only S, um, out of WAC, only the, the S key is used to switch between your melee and ranged weapon, which we don't have yet, so... Um, yeah, we're also in combat mode, because we saw this goblin here. So, we'll, oh, quickly kill him. Actually, we have... Spells. I, I I forgot to kind of set up some things here, so let's quickly go over the spells. We have minor heal. I'm gonna go put my main attack spell here real quick. Actually, yeah, let's just finish the fight. There, goblin is gone. Ending combat. Yep, I know. Press the F key to end combat. And uh, let's look at our stuff. Actually, well, experience. Uh, we have our resistances here. I could... okay, so points I didn't spend during character creation are still available and I could use them, but I'm gonna keep them because I assume that as we level up we gain, just gain more skill points to spend on things. And I'm, I'm really curious to see if more skills like gymnastics will just pop up as we maybe meet certain stat requirements or other prerequisites and maybe there are gonna be some, some special skills specific to, to missile weapons. If not, I guess we'll just have to rely entirely on doing a lot of damage with our base attack. I mean, again, I'm, I'm fully aware that this is not an ideal party. 
I'm not optimized at all. Uh, everyone is also very specialized in what they do. I could um, arguably go for a, you know more all-round characters and get a lot more utility out of them. But you know, um, I did well enough in the previous game or games, and I don't feel like I need to change anything drastic. There's some food too, and um, well, I'm not entirely sure if if that was only true for the the very old the Exile games. Um, but I'm gonna make sure to have some food around. It doesn't seem like you actually use it to um, when you, when you rest, but it might certainly serve a purpose other than just healing for a minor amount. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm carrying some food with me, which was definitely not necessary at all in the in the. Uh, Newer games. Anyway, uh, spells. So, uh, let's see here. You have uh, Fireball, we have Call Beast, we have Spray Acid. Uh, the spells give you a lot less info on what how exactly they work. Um, so I'm not entirely sure if there is a significant difference between Bolt of Fire and Spray Acid. They both seem to be single target spells. Uh, obviously they do different types of damage, so I guess if you encounter something Immune to fire, you can use spray acid. Also, of course, it does leave a dot, so it stands to, to argue that in a longer fight, it makes sense to start with this one, so that the enemy will take some damage over time across the fight. We do start with haste, which I I feel like this only became available later in the game in the in the remakes, the re remakes, but I'm definitely happy happy to have it. Um, I don't know if I've tried this yet. It might be a single target. It looks like. Well, from the description, enables the target to perform more actions in combat. So it might definitely be a lot less um, overpowered than, than I'm used to. Slow is nice. Icy Rain. Oh, I didn't have this before, so I guess I did not... I actually must have only given him five skill, uh, four skill points previously. Huh. We do start with, a, with an area effect. Wait, that's not what I meant to do. Right. I just want, want to bind them here. No, right. Wrong character, there we go. Definitely want my Bolt of Fire as my go-to spell here. I guess I'm gonna go with... Oh yeah, Daze, I didn't look at that, but... Confuses nearby enemies. So, that is no longer targetable, but it's instead like the slow spell it was before. And the slow spell is a single target now. So, those are some things that are sure to make me, you know, to, to make me trip up in the future. So that's cool. I'm gonna put Icy Rain there. And uh, Haste. Hopefully it's still gonna be somewhat useful, even though it's single target. And for you, well, we have our priest skills here, priest spells. We have minor heal, of course, which is kind of, you know, base necessity. We have curing, which uh, is also gonna come in handy, I'm sure. We have our blessings, which seem to work pretty much like I'm used to. We have Repel Spirit, which is definitely new. That is That has been completely removed for the remakes. Um, this is a spell that specifically damages undead and other worldly creatures, like demons, I guess. Yeah, it actually says so right there. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't work on everything, but I can only assume it deals more damage. Well, at the very least, it's less expensive than Smite, so there's that. But, yeah, Smite is still going to be our go-to damage spell, of course. And I guess I'll put minor heal here, and then put war blessing and protection here, which should come in handy. Okay, now we're much better prepared. I'm gonna quick save. Also worth noting, wait, I did quick save. Yes, uh, worth noting that there is no confirmation. If you, as soon as you hit F4, you reload. So let's hope I don't accidentally do that. Uh, the goblin mischievously closed this old rusty gate behind him when it snuck down here. It sealed itself in, probably not realizing that you were down here. Fortunately, you can reopen the gate by turning the wheel to the south. You don't say. Oh, thank goodness, and I thought we were stuck here. How to cast a spell? Yep, just went over that. There is someone in the corridor ahead. You prepare to defend yourself, afraid that another goblin broke in. But then you see that it is Baudry, the cook for the fort. She looks nervous. She seems to want to talk to you. To speak with her, click on her. Right. Um, well, before we we do that, we pick up some loot. Um, bars of iron are 
uh, somewhat heavy, but worth a little bit. Now, uh, a thing I did find out, well, for whatever reason, they, they do have letters assigned to items on the ground in this particular screen. So, uh, and when you press them, oh, except I can't because I rebound A. Uh, that's, hmm. Okay, I might want to think about uh, adding adding a hotkey for that because actually what what would normally happen is pressing A would just move the first item on the ground to your pack and then hitting A again would just pick up this one and put it and stack it with the other one so that would that makes looting things on the ground very convenient actually or actually in, in anywhere even in containers um, whereas otherwise you know you'd have to pick them up although actually huh, well you know it works I can click on them and gen then just hit one and it will automatically place them in the first character's inventory, or any characters, really. But uh, since these are somewhat heavy, I'm going to um, give them to my strongest character, of course. Hello, Bodhi. Bodhi is a tall, hearty woman, unusually heavy, heavily built for the poorly fed citizens of Avernum. Her skin has the pale, translucent look of those who have spent their lives in the underworld. She is the fort's cook. She may have come down here to get some supplies. What was going on, she asks. Did I hear a fight? Um... Uh, yeah, we could be very rude or just, you know, answer in a, in a normal manner. I'm not going to play some kind of sociopath, so... Yes, a goblin snuck in. Nothing important. Bodhi looks around nervously. Goblins? Even down here? I wish Captain Maltos would figure out how they were getting in and squish them. Well, we might actually look into that sometime soon. I was looking for some mushroom flour. Maybe I'll look for some somewhere else. Uh, it should be all right. I cleaned it out. Bodhi peers into the darkness, listens to the dripping water, and shudders. Uh, I'm sure I'll find some somewhere else. Why don't you come to the dining hall? The stew is ready soon. She turns to go upstairs, quickly. Well, fair enough. As she physically walks up the stairs, blocking the corridor, I'm just going to look around here a little bit, although I'm pretty sure there isn't anything to be found. Well, there are more of these jars. Right, actually we do have something. Our first healing potion, some trash. Oh, actually, also you can just you can right-click on items and you get um, a description, kind of Baldur's Gate style, uh, something they did get rid of for the remakes. Unfortunately, I kind I'm kind of fond of these, uh, you know, little descriptions for every single item. Although I get that they're not that useful, and you know, in the interest of of saving resources, it makes sense to get rid of them. Unfortunately, but yeah, this is just trash. And this is just iron. Actually, you can just you can go through all of your items like this, which is pretty cool. I'm not going to read all of these descriptions, except for, I guess, uh, items that seem special. Right, yeah. As I said, unfortunately, containers, interactable objects, are not highlighted at all when pressing the, uh, the tab key. But that's fine. These are the stairs up to the main floor of the fort. You should probably go upstairs and find Captain Matos and get your new orders. Probably should. Also, I guess I never went over other elements of the in of the uh, of the interface. Right down here, we have weapons or spells, uh, picking up items, um, attacking something specifically, something that's not hostile. We have the option to do that. Although it is not, uh, there is no hotkey for it, as far as I'm aware. So, yeah, we shouldn't need that all, uh, very often, anyway. So that's fine. This was oh, this is combat mode, right? Uh, this is our journal which uh, is pretty much exactly what I'm used to. Um, I'm very happy to see that it still very detailedly lists your quests and gives you a journal in case you want to take notes. I never did that, of course. And then special items are still here. So yeah, this should be very handy. And I'm glad that this modern convenience uh, is already part of this version of the engine. Uh, then we have our instructions, which I guess I maybe should go over. Uh, off camera at some point just to make sure I'm aware of all the differences. Uh, we have party edit which uh, doesn't really allow me to do a whole lot except change the names but um, I'm not going to. And then we have the map which is kind of important I guess. So this was actually a bit of a surprise. I was totally expecting to be in a completely different part of Avernum since you know I never I'd never heard of Fort Monastery but it actually looks like a much more crudely drawn, but otherwise very recognizable map as I'm as I know of Burnham, you know. We have basically all the names are are familiar. Uh Kotra does look like it's in ruins, as it should be. 
unless they started rebuilding. Um, the Tower of Magi, for some reason, is, is called Tower Colony now. Maybe they got rid of the, of the Magi, maybe they relocated somewhere else, and it's now being used well, as a colony, I guess. We'll find out eventually. The honeycomb is not... I'm not really... I don't really remember it being this, uh, this much of a mess, of a labyrinth, but we'll see. Yeah, everything else seems familiar. I don't remember Camp Samuels. That might be new, but it might also have been a minor location before that I just don't remember. Um, also, in the later games, the unsettled lands here, or the unexplored caves, I think they were called, um, used to be used to have their own map, or used to be part of the map, at least partially. And then I'm not entirely sure. This must be where uh, Grahoth's fortress was, and the Empire, the Empire-controlled area was in the second game. Uh, so, I don't know, this area might be slightly different, but it might not be. And then, of course, we are here, and yes, there there was a monastery here at some point, and we're actually going to learn about that. But yeah, this is this does seem to take place in the, the same area as the first two games, which uh, did come as a bit of a surprise to me. Anyway, you enter the main barracks of Fort Monastery. The air is fresher up here, and the building's more spacious. After a few weeks down in the hole, you look forward to when you get moved up here. You should wander around the fort and speak with people. Oh, I will. You will learn a lot more about how things work. Also, try holding on, uh, holding down the tab key. Yes, thanks, game. It's helpful enough. That way, we learn that there is our Captain Malos here, and um, Captain Matos, excuse me, and he just talks to us. Rude. Captain Matos walks over to you. He is deathly pale and looks much older than he is. Like most residents of Avernum, the experience of running Fort Monastery has aged him even more. Life is tough in Avernum, and even worse out here on the frontier. Ah, you're finally up, he growls. Good. You've had enough time to rest and get settled in. I need you to start working on the real job you're out here for. You note that his armor and weapons are old and dented from many minor battles and some major ones. On the surface, the Empire would have replaced his equipment long ago. Here in the Underworld, you have to make do with what you have. Yep. Tell me about it. I mean, look at our equipment. Uh, what do you want me to do? Well, the first step is to get you outfitted. We don't have much quality gear out here, but we're going to spare some of what little we have for you. Don't misuse it. There is some storerooms at the west end of the fort. There is a bow in one and a potion in the other. A bow and a potion. Well, that's generous. Go collect them. When you're outfitted, I'll get you started on the next step. Fair enough. Tell me about Fort Monastery. While well, we're here, I guess. Well, it's one of the newer forts in Avernum. We only really claimed this land a few years ago. It's a lot smaller than Fort Draco or Fort Dranlon or the others. Why is it called Fort Monastery? <clears throat> there used to be a monastery out here. A bunch of crazy monks, skilled healers, but reclusive. They tried to live out here on their own. Did work out well for them. The giants got the better of them. This fort is built on the ruins. Hmm, okay. I mean, I thought I I had a pretty thorough had done a pretty thorough job on those giants, but I guess I didn't fully wipe them out. Maybe it, that was a mistake. <laughs> How long have you been here? I've been in charge here since Fort Monastery was formed. Yes, and that's been how long ago? Hmm. I wanted my whole life to fight for Avernum. Pity it wasn't in a more important place. How long How long have you lived in Avernum? All my life. Some come down here from the surface to seek their fortune, but most Avernites were born down here. I was I was born not too long after the Second Slith War. Second Slith War? Uh, is that the one against Sths, or is that a different one? I mean, it wasn't really much of a war, since... It was just a party of four random people wandering in and, and assassinating him. Or, you know, not so, not so much assassinating as slaughtering the entire fortress, including him. Oh well. In fact, I'm third generation. The Empire threw my grandfather down here originally for, for one crime or another. Why did the Empire banish your grandfather to Avernum? Uh, I mean, that's, as we know, having played the previous games, that's a pretty rude thing to ask, but... Whatever. Funny thing, but I have no idea. He never said. I guess he's not too upset about it. Most of those old codgers were eager to stay uh, to say why they got banished. It was a badge of pride, but Grandpa always kept quiet about it. Hmm. Maybe he was just a humble person who didn't really like to talk about himself too much, or maybe it was something really bad, but it doesn't really matter either way. Okay, thank you. So we're supposed to get stuff. That sounds good to me. Um... Once again, we have some things that are not for for us to take. Oops. 
Um, let's also, I'll have to get used to to looking down here at you know how much an item is worth. Yeah, um, I mean one thing that this this engine is missing, and one of the minor things that are definitely not gonna gonna be that big of a problem is uh, no tooltips at all. So the engine just does not um, support that kind of thing, which is a shame. But you know, as I said, it's definitely not the biggest issue here. We're not allowed to take any of these things or any of these things, of course. Some random soldiers. Oh, we can't take these things, including some stylish capes. Yes. Thank you. And a tunic. And unfortunately, Ricky gets the short end of the stick when it comes to loot, but I'm sure we'll be outfitted with at least a full supplement of, of basic items soon enough. Got some throwing uh, thingamajigs, javelins. Right, saving my game. I guess I could do that. There is a stone obelisk in this alcove at the back of the fort. It is carved with strange glyphs and symbols. The corners of the stone are all sharp and there is no moss on it. It doesn't look like it's been here long. There is a strange electric feeling in the air and your hair stands on end. There is some sort of powerful unidentified magic here. Small wonder, small wonder then that the soldiers are staying a safe distance away. It looks like an interesting artifact. You wonder what it's for. Hmm. I feel like I have an idea. You touch the obelisk. A painful shock runs up your arm. You pull your hand away. Something just happened, but you're not sure what. Well, if I had to guess, I'd say that we attuned ourselves with this obelisk to later be able to quick travel here. Although it's interesting that that we don't, that our characters don't seem to know what it's about if it's just a quick travel thing. Maybe they're not generally used anymore? But they kind of must be, or else why would they have erected here somewhat recently? Anyway, you're at the entrance to one of, the, one of the two storage caves at the west edge of Fort Monastery. If you explore the storerooms, you can find some useful supplies and learn more about the sorts of items in the burn form. Well, let's see about that. Dropping and using items. Yes. With, okay. Fair enough. And we get... Wait, what? Some gloves, I guess. And we're not allowed to take these, but then again, no one will ever know, right? You stole the item without anyone seeing you. I mean, it's gotta be for the benefit of of this fort and all of Avernum, right? So and that's that's okay. A bow has been left on the table here. Missiles can be valuable, blah blah blah. Uh, equip missiles like bows and javelins, like you equip melee weapons. Right. We know that, of course. Oh, you need to be closer. You need to be pretty close, actually, to be able to. Um, to loot things, so that's something to keep in mind. This must be the other storeroom, yes. Okay. Quick use slots, I know. I'll give you a potion, I mean, like here. And this is... Oh, that's a... I thought it was a bolt of cloth, derp. Um, ice bowl, base damage 7 to 28, value 20, I mean... I don't know, I guess I could could just go ahead and sell it, because am I really going to use it? Ice Bolt. Oh wait, that's Smite. That's actually the spell Smite, even though it's called Ice Bolt. That's funny. Hmm. I mean, we can Smite. And and he has an alternate magical attack. Maybe we should, we should just sell this to get some early money. I guess it depends on what the shop even sells, if it's... If, if more money would even be be useful. Right, and there's this underground section. I kind of forgot about that. Not even uh, trapdoors and things are going to be highlighted by this button. It's, uh, well, it's what it is. Let's stay on the on the surface for now and look around here a bit more. We do get our our map and, well, since there are no tooltips, you have to actually click these question marks and you're still going to... Stone pylon, yeah. You're still going to get a little info, so that's good. Captain Matos' office, and this is the dining, dining dining hall. And right, there's Baudry. Once again, you meet Baudry, the cook for Fort Monastery. She clearly made her way up from the basement safely. I mean, how could she possibly not have made it up safely from where she was? Now she's wiping up tables, getting ready for the next dinner rush. You can smell the mushroom and lizard meat stew cooking. She curtly nods at you as she cleans. Sorry, can't talk too much. Too much to do. Um... I see you got out of the basement safely. 
Good job. She looks at you sharply, watching for signs of sarcasm. What, sarcasm? No. I'm completely serious. Then she says in a flat voice, It is wise for me to be cautious. I've caught glimpses of a goblin in the basement more than once. Really? Where? Well, there are several ways down into the tunnels under this fort. Um, they are in the storerooms. I've seen goblins down there more than once. Not sure how they got there, but goblins can be dangerous if they outnumber you enough. That's it's true, I guess. Uh, do you have to feed a lot of people? Everyone who passes through here. Soldiers, merchants, and so on. Everyone in this area stops at Fort Monastery to rest up. What do you feed them? Good, hearty, overnight food. Bread made with mushroom flour, mushroom ale, and steaks of lizard and bat meat. The surface waters might turn their noses up at it, but it's good enough for us. Where can I rest? You always have a bunk waiting for you at Fort Monastery. Right. So, so basically, as we're, as we're used to, um, just entering a town rests you completely, which is convenient enough. For sure. Uh, could I get some food? Well, yes, but it would cost me money, so thanks, but no thanks. Uh, how did you come to be at Fort Monastery? I'm third generation Evernight, like the captain, and proud of it. When I came of age, I jumped at the chance to serve my land in the best way I can. And don't underestimate me, because I work in the shop, uh, in the slop house. I can wield a blade well enough, thank you. Okay, I, I, I didn't judge you. Uh, do all young Evernights join the army? No, they aren't forced. That's the sort of uh, that's the sort of thing the Empire does. We believe in freedom down here. But most do anyway. We raise our children to be proud. How did your family come to be in Avernum? Oh, that's a lot of long stories, one for each great-grandparent. Some were rebels, some opposed, some opposed unjust taxes or policies, some were just eccentric. I've heard all the stories many times, and my children will hear them too. We all appreciate the history and sacrifices that made our lives here. Okay, you also kind of dodged my question. Well, not really, I guess. Um, well, that's uh, all for now. Thanks. Hello, Philip. There's a pale, sullen man skulking back here in the corner. He is thin even by Evernight standards. He hasn't bathed in a while and looks like he's traveled a long way. He nods at you when you get close. You seem to find he seems to find you interesting. He says, "Hi, I'm Philip. Um, you look tired. I am, but I have my job to do, and I'll do it. Come too far not to. My father didn't raise me to be weak. Okay, where are you from? I'm from Mertis." Okay, yeah, that's pretty far away. Mertis is a farming village to the south, over a week's hard journey to the south. Philip walked a long way. It's, yeah, well, southeast, really, but... Who is your father? A simple man. You haven't heard of him. He smiles briefly, and you think you detect a touch of homesickness in his expression. Oh, huh, okay. Uh, what brings you out here? A matter of family honor. Tell me about it. I'm looking for a man named Stanos. He said he was going to marry my sister. We gave him a ring to seal the bargain, then he left, abandoning her, and took the ring with him. You came all the way for a ring? I mean, is it magic? He laughs out loud. No, of course not. It has just been in our family since we were banished to Avernum. We won't let it remain in the hands of a treacherous stranger. I know it seems foolish to you, but it is my family's way. We believe firmly in maintaining our honor, no matter what. That is probably what got us thrown into Avernum all those years ago. You understand what he means. Families in Avernum are frontier families. Stubborn, close, and ready to fight for their honor. Hmm. Uh, what happened to your sister? Nothing drastic. At least she isn't expecting, thank goodness. She made a bad choice. Fortunately, his weakness showed itself, but he still stole a ring. Where is Donald? I have learned that he is in the settlement of Grindstone to the south. Yeah, I saw that. That's actually the other not familiar sounding name. Um, besides that camp uh, or Fort Samuels, I think. But I'm not entirely sure. I I feel like the name Grindstone rings some sort of distant bell. I guess we'll see when we get there. So anyway, uh, he's in the settlement of Grindstone to the south. But I can't get there because of all the goblins. It's just not safe. So I don't know what to do. Uh, what a predicament. Man, I'm sorry. Yeah, good luck with that, I guess. <laughs> we can't say that. It's nice to have someone to talk to, to talk to about it. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know... If I happen to see Stanos, maybe I'll see if I can get your ring back. His eyes light up. You suddenly see how young Philip is. Too young for such a journey. Thank you. If you could, my family would owe you a debt. And we pay our debts. Oh, that sounds good. With that, you bid him good day. And we have a quest. Uh, wait. How do you... Uh-oh. I used to know how to quickly open your... 
uh, quest log, but that's fine. Filtering. There we go. Seems to have all the info we need. Nice, nice. Open the door, and yeah, right, there is another uh, trapdoor there. Okay, these are some... Someone's quarters... Oh. You're able to tell that this has a trap, but your tool use skill isn't high enough. Wait, does it... Does it actually matter which character you try to open it with? No. <laughs> and you just die. Well, I mean, one of us just died. Every Everyone might die, actually. Yep. Except... Uh, in fact, everyone died after a single step. Okay, this is what the death screen looks like. Everyone is a harsh place. Countless adventurers have fallen to rock slides, hunger, drowning, and of course, a limitless variety of monsters. Or just, you know, being greedy and opening someone else's chest. For, unfortunately, you have added yourself to the legions of Avernum's Fallen. It's a pity, but hardly surprising. It's the end of every adventurer, or at least every sane one. Uh, it's the end every ex adventurer, or at least every sane one, expects. And yet, Avernum's troubles remain. Some fall, but the war continues. It's time to try again. Can we reload from here? No. We can reload from... Quick, quick load from the main screen. That's convenient. Okay, so let's try not to open that. Or, you know, let's not try to open that. The door is locked, but you managed to pick the lock. Nice. I don't think that netted us any experience. Maybe it did. Maybe not. We did kill that goblin, so I'll have to pay more attention to that next time. Of course, I don't really know which door is going to be locked before I try to open it. Oh, this is difficulty 8. Well, so much for that. Um, I feel like there was... Ah, yes. The building to the east is Apello's shop. Apello is the largest merchant out here on the frontier, though small-scale next to everyone else. Most of the supplies in the fort are shipped in by her. You can speak with Apello to buy supplies and sell treasures you find during your journeys. Talk to merchants you meet throughout Avernum to buy and sell items. Right, hello, Apello. Hello, Apello. You meet Apello, Fort Monastery's merchant. Uh, she is in charge of getting food and other supplies shipped from Avernum to the fort, distributing them to the soldiers, and getting you and getting paid for her efforts. She looks like most native Avernites, pale, thin, and wiry, with strong muscles built by a lifetime of climbing over boulders and crawling down tunnels. She looks like she's in a good mood, despite the difficulties of getting goods out here. She smiles. Welcome, soldier. Need some equipment? Sure, I'd like to buy some gear. Let's at least look at what she has. Right, unfortunately she does not sell any kind of pole arm. Um, and we don't need it. We don't really need a second bow. Not so much that I would like to buy one anyway. We could buy some some extra equipment, but I mean we're gonna have a full complement of uh, a full set of, of basic equipment soon enough, so I'm definitely gonna hold on to my very few coins. We can sell you some stuff, I guess. Again, it's really unfortunate that we don't have that that very convenient junk bag. Yeah, I'm just gonna sell that. Uh, how has business been? Bad. There have always been monsters on the frontier, but in the last few months, out of nowhere, it's gotten a lot worse. Hmm. Seems kind of familiar. Uh, what sort of monsters are out there? Well, the goblins, of course. Mean, dumb, breed like crazy. Don't matter how many of them you kill, they'll be back. And then there's a Neffel to the east. Lots of them between here and Fort Draco. If they calm down, if they don't calm down, they'll need to get the business end of a sword. Uh, she notes that she is talking to a Neffel, among others. Uh, no offense, she adds. Sure, sure. Those are savages, of course. Very much unlike, um, 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 what's he called again? Dirk. Dirk. Uh, has it been hard to get shipments out there, out here? You don't know the half of it. I've lost three wagons in the last three months. Never showed up. No idea where the gear went. No sign of the guards and drivers. Well, that's bad. I hope they got away, but, well, you never know. You know, it would be really helpful to me if... I at least knew where the wagons were attacked, then I'd know what areas to stay clear of. If you told me, I'd pay you a bounty for each wagon. Okay, that sounds like another quest for, to me. Where should I look? Fort Draco is the nearest fort to the east. Search between here and there. Okay. Yep, that is indeed a quest. How do you... I swear there was a, a button to open the, the journal somehow. Oh, that's loot. J, K, L... M is mage spells, of course. Oh, C to cast a spell? Interesting. Did I know that? Maybe not. 
Hmm. Well, that's, that's that. That's, oh, T to bring up the log. That's right. Hmm. Okay, maybe there just isn't. Nope. 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 Well, that's okay. That's not so bad. What else do we have? Uh, Time-wise, well, we have a few minutes left. Maybe I should return to, our, to the captain and see what he has to say. Uh, I found the equipment you left for me. Good. Now I can really put you to work. When you're ready to get started, let me know. I mean... Oh, what is that magical obelisk to the northwest? Nothing. Nothing important. Nothing that concerns you. Just be about your business and stay away from there. Well, okay, that's weird. Huh. All right. Can I get any more supplies or equipment? Captain Matos makes a rude snorting noise. Oh, of course. We're dripping in supplies out here. King Starus... King Starus? Oh, okay. That's a new one. Is bending over backwards to give us anything we want. You suspect that he is being sarcastic, but you're not entirely sure. Hmm. I wonder. We'll give you some more equipment, if you earn it. But for now, what you have is what you get. Okay, cool. Cool. I mean, sorry for asking. What is my mission? I need something done about the goblins. They're a nuisance, and the problem is getting worse. They keep sneaking into the fort, and I don't know how. They aren't getting in through the front gate, and they aren't dropping down from the ceiling above the fort. Find out how they're getting in, and let me know. You have any idea how they're getting in? Well, if I did, I wouldn't need you, would I? Get searching. Maybe ask around the fort. Someone might have seen something. Right. I mean, we have been told about the storerooms, and I guess that's a pretty good bet to start there. Actually, is there... What is in this corner? Oh, that's another... That's where we came up. Right. Derp. Uh, okay, let's uh, check out one more place. This is... The Smithy. Right. So, by the way, this is about as far as I had come previously in that... Oh, sticky key. In that uh, first recording. Actually, a little bit further, because I never went here. Doddy. This is Doddy, the fort's blacksmith. In a Vernon, where new equipment is hard to come by, a skilled smith to repair broken gear is an absolute necessity. He is an unusual looking man. Evernites tend to be small and thin, but Doddy is a big, bulky man. Time at the forge has given his face a bit of color. He looks nervous when you approach. Hello, hello there. Hope you aren't here for repairs. Already got a ton to do. Hmm. Do you have any weapons and armor for sale? Oh, he does. A bronze spear, for example. I mean, I kind of need one of these. Chances are I'm going to find one, but I'm just going to buy one, because why not? Steel javelins, a tin helmet, an actual metal helmet, <gasps> an iron shield. Well, we'll not be able to use that, I don't think. I'm assuming that spears are automatically two-handed weapons. Yes, this is a two-handed weapon. It's wielded in both hands and used to damage your foes. Right. Yeah, I mean, more damage than various swords. I really hope so. And I'm really, I really hope that I'm, that it's viable to, to have my frontline fighter not use a shield, but we'll see. Uh, do you buy gear? No, I don't. You should talk to Apollo about that. However, I'm always short of metal, raw iron. Oh no! Oh, God damn it! Why did I sell that to her? I mean, I guess I couldn't have known, but man, that's a bummer. Uh, is, is it that difficult to get iron? Not as bad as it was in years past. We get a lot shipped down from the Empire, but it's still in short supply. You'd think we get, we'd have plenty of metal down here, but it hasn't worked out that way. Yeah, apparently not. Um, hmm. I mean, he says that he that he's gonna. Well, maybe he would have given me an option to to buy all my iron if I had any. I'll definitely keep that in mind. Uh, you have a lot of work to do. Yep, every hour of every day it seems. We Evernights aren't a rich people, that's for sure. Though it's not as bad as it used to be. Uh, what sort of trade do we have? Well, some people in Avernum get rich. They come down looking for gems, precious metal, and especially crystals. Magic quality crystals. Then they get wealthy and leave for the surface. Or they stay down here and trade the stuff to the Empire for the supplies we need to stay alive. How did it used to be? Well, Avernum was a prison colony, of course. We only had what scraps they sent down to us, or what, they for what we foraged. Then it was as much as your life was worth to what then it was it was as much as your life was worth to find a chunk of rusty iron to form into a dagger. Hmm, okay. Warriors 
warriors just starting out use stone weapons, if you can imagine that. Hmm. I don't think we ever used stone weapons in the previous games, but maybe that was even before our time. Okay. Is that all? Or it used to be? Hmm. Okay, well, fair enough. No quest from you. Well, except that he is going to pay us good money for iron, I suppose. What is this? Seeing your quests. Yes. Uh, press the journal button, so no mention of a quick button there. Fair enough. You're standing by a job board. Most towns and settlements have one. Adventurers can consult them to learn bounties, uh, learn of bounties they can obtain and jobs they can perform. For pay, of course. <laughs> of course. I'd hope so. Click on the board to see what is available. Right. Work well to return to old job boards. Sometimes new missions will appear. Okay. So far so good. And this looks very much like in the newer games. Okay. Message to Grindstone. A sealed letter has been uh, tacked to this board. It is addressed to someone named Jen, who can be found in Grindstone. Grindstone is a mining camp south of Fort Monastery. You are promised a payment of several silver coins upon delivery of the letter. Bad bits required. Okay. Lark, a hedge wizard in Fort Monastery, who we haven't seen yet, has left a note on this board. She says that she requires the wings of three mottled bats for the completion of some potion or other. She mentions that, mentions that mottled bats can sometimes be found in the caves to the south. All right. Undead infestation. Okay. That sounds like a proper quest for adventurers. Captain Matos left a note on the Fort Monastery job board addressed to any passing adventurers with time on their hands. Apparently a mage with the taste for the necromantic arts named Harko was buried in a crypt in the tunnel south of here. Since then, some residual magic has animated his body, and his undead form has been causing a variety of troubles. Captain Matos will pay anyone who can locate Harko's crypt and kill him. Again. Okay. We'll do that. Hmm, I wonder if quests are marked on the map? No, of course not. That would have been a little bit too much of, of a modern convenience, I guess. Okay. We've never been... Oh, we've never been up here. What is that? Can we please? Keep moving, thank you. No sign? Oh, difficulty 8. That's right, that's why. I suppose not being able to open the door is a pretty good reason not to open it. Hmm. Well. Huh? Strout. Oh, that must be the local priest. You know what? Um, oh, we we're, we're over an hour. So I want to... I'm going to cut this episode short here. We'll, I'll keep these about an hour long, as, as I did with the previous series. Um, so we'll continue exploring Fort uh, Monastery soon. Oh, hello, Oliver. We'll also have to talk to you. Thankfully, most people with a special name also kind of stand out visually, which is definitely fortunate, because I'm not planning to keep holding down the, the tap button all the time. Um, yeah, anyway, we're going to continue our exploration and actually start doing some adventuring, maybe, um, uh, next time. So, for the time being, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and I shall see you real soon. Bye-bye.